Well, our sister Diane is is one of six. Uh, she's sort of like the middle, the middle sister. Well, the younger sister, but the middle child. Um, she's well, she was probably the nicest out. Well, I'm saying the nicest <laughs> out of the lot of us. She was uh, very kind-hearted. She'd do anything for anybody. She was a real good friend. And we spent a lot of time together as sisters, um, you know, going to uh, centre parks, um, days out, spa days, things like that. So we did spend a lot of time together. And um, we were very, very close as a family. Well, she'd been ill for probably a year or more before she was diagnosed, which would have been in 2009. Um, she'd been going to the doctor in that year and they'd been fobbing her off with all sorts of, you know, they thought it might be perimenopausal and, you know, they, they didn't really do anything. They, they missed the early detection that they could have, uh, they could have found if they'd been a bit more up to date. And then she was finally uh, sent for a scan in um, September 2010. Joan? It was, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, where they, they discovered what they thought uh, were fibroids and told her that once she'd had a hysterectomy, you know, she'd feel like a new woman. And um, I think they'd booked her in for February, the following year, to have a hysterectomy. But in January, uh, she was so ill that uh, Terry actually took her into the hospital, didn't he, Joan? Yeah, she was admitted. He yeah. took her into hospital because she was so ill, she, she wouldn't have, you know, she couldn't have stayed at home. And uh, while she was in there, uh, they decided to do an MRI scan. That was um, early 2011, um, where they found the mass on her ovary and obviously realised that it wasn't fibroids that they were dealing with. And um, she had an operation as soon as she was well enough, which was possibly about a week after she was taken in, wasn't it? Um, and then they found out that, you know, the, the tumour had spread from her ovaries into her bowel and just about everywhere. Uh, she spent a few days in intensive care and, you know, uh, she had to have a colostomy and really, she never really recovered from that. You know, she had to have another operation about two weeks after that one and she had chemotherapy and she never really recovered, you know, from that. Oh, it affected us terribly. We were devastated as a yeah, family. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We were. Um, I mean, from, from the, certainly from the time uh, she, she went in hospital and had her first yeah. operation, we spent some part of every single every day. day with her until we lost her in October 2011. We saw her every single day, either in hospital or when she was at home. It affected her brothers really badly as well. Obviously, mum and aunties and everyone because she was such a nice, gentle girl. It just seemed very cruel. Um, well, at the tribute night, uh, we'd got people in taking photographs and members of Compress Media in there as well. And um, they, they actually rang my sister-in-law, who had been to school with some of them, and said, you know, we'd like to help you to raise more money for ovarian cancer action. And how about doing a Christmas video? Um, um, we talked about it, uh, we had a meeting together, decided that it would be called Blue Christmas, um, and that obviously Jamie would be singing because he's brilliant. Um, and while we were discussing this, Joan and Cheryl and myself decided that we really should have some kind of a, a group. You know, we've, we've set up a, a not-for-profit uh, group called the Bright Star Group. Um, because we wanted somewhere uh, to put the money that we were making. We've made quite a lot of money over the last year and we just wanted to be uh, a proper company that people could look at and think, well, yeah, we know that they're doing it properly. We know that the money that they're raising is going to this group and then is being transferred over to Ovarian Cancer Action. Yeah, well, I were, I were down at Tribune Night for Diane and I bumped into Paul, who I'd not seen for many a year since I were at school with him. And Jamie, obviously, were singing that night. 
and I think Paul came up with an idea about this video and contacted me. And I suddenly thought about my son being in a marching band and I contacted my son and straight away he wanted to get involved. He contacted Lee and Lee's widely involved with Commodores and they're from all over the country. And uh, he got them all together and they got the brass section over and they were fantastic on day. They come from all over, they travelled upon train and they were dedicated, they stayed all night until the job was done and they, they did a brilliant job. So that's how I got involved, yeah. Yeah, they were more than happy to get involved, yeah. Uh, as soon as I mentioned it to Lee, they were keen straight away. They, they, they've done, uh, they did work at, uh, you know, the O2 Arena when Rolling Stones were playing the 50th anniversary. They did that as well. And they also did the Olympics as well. Um, we did a tribute night, uh, tribute night at Kilmarsh for Diane. Um, got invited by Cheryl and met her sister-in-laws. Um, you know, and it were a big thing. It were a... Uh, only a year ago, so it, you know they lost a sister uh, through this tragic ovarian cancer disease, and uh, they wanted to, you know, fight and raise lots of money, which is a good idea. I mean, don't get me wrong; there's loads of charities, there's loads of different cancers, and they're all worth, you know, worth fighting for. And I'm sure, hopefully, touch wood, in 30 years we'll have a cure for them all. But without such as Joan and Linda trying to make you aware and raise money for any cancer event. Obviously, this one was ovarian. We need that money. Uh, they need that money to, like, you know, break through, and hopefully, this will be a thing of the past. Uh, obviously, I've had my own uh, experience with cancer uh, about nine, ten years ago. Uh, can't remember. I'm really, trying to put it to one side now. I had nine, ten months in Western Park um, chemotherapy. Um, it was touch and go at one time, and uh, obviously, I'm still here. You know, he saved me for a reason. Perhaps my reason is to help everybody else and raise as much as we can. I don't know, I really don't know, Jeff, but I'm here and I've got to grasp that opportunity and just enjoy life, which I try and do. So you enjoyed, did, did you enjoy being involved in Zion's video and uh, are you pleased that you got involved? No, not at all. I hated it absolutely every minute of it. Uh, I was forced. No, seriously. On a more serious note, I loved every minute of it. I mean, come on, who, 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 who don't want to be a star or a DVD? I mean... I mean, I'm, what, 33 now, um, so, you know, it was my chance to shine, and hopefully I did. And uh, everybody works so hard. I mean, you know, people behind the scenes, yourself, Paul, the band, Ray, um, John, Lynn. There's two, you know, there's, there's loads of people. If I haven't mentioned you, I'm sorry, but it was just a big team effort, and um, it was brilliant, absolutely. Hard work, but brilliant, and I'd, I'm not going to say I'd do it again, actually, but no, it was good, it was good, really good. Yeah, a lot of hours involved. Everybody worked hard, everybody, not just me. It weren't just down to me. We just had really good fun because, you know, we'd got to try and source props and uh, yeah. we were ringing people <laughs> up for Christmas trees and reindeer and you name it. And everyone really helped out by donating things to us, yeah. you know. And, I mean, the guys that were filming and Jamie just spent hours and hours and hours working on it. And it just turned out to be fantastic. Uh, I understand there was an interesting photograph taken during the video. There was, in the church, yes. Uh, taken by Cheryl, our sister-in-law. And um, she put it onto Facebook at some point in, in the day or two afterwards. And one of her friends said, oh, nice photograph. The orb uh, above the tallest brother's head is very interesting. And when we looked at it, there was, there was a, an orb, really bright white orb, over Neil's head, that's our youngest brother. Uh, and when I saw that, I looked at all my photographs that I'd taken in the church, and I'd got a lot of the tree. And I looked at all the ones that everyone else had taken, and the orb wasn't there. And we knew that there wasn't anything hanging in that space. Uh, and we went back, the next time we went back to the church, which, which was a few days later, the first thing we did was check what was up in, in position on the tree. Yes. And we knew that there wouldn't be anything there. So we just think that, 
you know, she never missed a photo opportunity, our little sister. <laughs> she didn't. We think she must have been there while yeah. we were having so much fun. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it, it's been a great project and a fantastic cause as well. So I'm sure, I'm, I hope they made a, a lot of money for Bavarian Cancer Cause. Uh, and so that's us, the Bright Star, Bright Star Group. Group. You can see us on Facebook. Anyone that would like to go on Facebook and like our page would be very happy. We need lots of supporters. Um, you can see us on there. You can see the things that are, you know, that will be upcoming in the next year. There's nothing on at the moment, but there is a hopefully a, a Good Friday uh, market, market stall planned, and there's definitely a tribute night for next October. But there will be other things, mm -hmm. and people can find out what other things there are from that Facebook page. Uh, we've managed to sell up to now fourteen hundred pounds worth. Um, which we're really pleased with, but we're, we've still got a few left, so we'll either keep them till next Christmas or we'll try and force people into buying them on our next market stall. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they've done great, and like I said, because it's a Christmas theme, hopefully next year we can do the same again. But just because this Christmas has gone, you can still order. Do you know what I mean? We've got a few left, only a few, mind you, so get your orders in. See Linda, see Joan, see Cheryl, see me, you know, just get in touch. And obviously go on the website as uh, Bright Star and things like that on Facebook and check it out yourselves. And it's really, really the best five you've ever spent, to be fair. I'll sign it. So if anybody would like to access Diane's tribute page, they can Google Ovarian Cancer Action and then go onto tribute pages, onto the link for tribute pages, and then put Diane's name in. If they put Diane Booth in, it will bring up the tribute page it's got information on donations and lots of candles that have been lit, poems, uh, poems and letters from us to her, lots of things. So, And it shows the amount that's been raised so far by all the generous people that we've been in touch with in the last year or so.